Look, I think what is very clear in this summit is that the ideas are on the table. We more or less all agree broadly what needs to happen, but it's still not happening. So the question becomes examining the mechanisms by which some of these things have to do. So uh, have to be. So, for example, in the resource mobilization session, it was we agree the private sector must be the engine, but how do we achieve that and still achieve government's legitimate requirements for um, for social uh, social needs? So the African Development Bank clearly sits in a very nice spot between private and public sector and could potentially um, be a helpful agent in, in realizing some of those things. So in the one session, how the African continent can extract more value from mineral resources was a very big topic. So we're going beyond just getting concessional uh, mining licenses to inward investment, infrastructure development right. by mining companies beyond just the old clinics and schools that used to happen right. before. So very much uh, going on a path of more action-oriented steps. Beneficiation, it's been a recurring theme for the last five or so years as people say we cannot just be exporters of raw materials, we'd rather be exporters of finished goods. How much impetus is there to start introducing secondary and tertiary tiers to the entire production process. That's probably a very good example of the, the, this whole idea that the concept enjoys support right across the continent. But as we can both observe, it's not happening at the pace that everybody would like. So the question becomes, what are the constraints? What are the blockages to make this actually happen? And finance is a very big one. Um, so the issue is, can we, knowing that we've got all of these trillions of dollars sitting potentially in pension assets uh, in the continent, South Africa being one, to what degree we can tap into those pools of capital, for example, to fund exactly that? Um, and this is a particular story for South Africa. And as you know, we are in a cycle where the minister has promised a four-month lead time to a new policy. But in today's session, particularly the one in which I was, there was a very big push about how do we make beneficiation happen? Who do we partner with? Is it, is it the Chinese or is it the more developed market where the value add is that much higher? You mentioned financing and that's also an underlying theme that's coming to the fore. The role of development finance institution, the role of commercial banks. And banks will tell you there's lots of cash in Africa. The ideas just aren't dynamic enough, that's sure. what they say. Sure. And a point that was made by one CEO of a bank in, in, in Africa that's in 32 countries and he said there is capital it's just not even in its spread. So it might be on one end of the continent, but it's required at another. So that, to some degree, is true. Obviously, it has to be limited by the fact that we, as Africans, just aren't saving enough mm. um, to power the infrastructure development that's required. But the issue of integration then comes to the fore, because regional integration across African markets become a big driver, for example, of making sure that capital is allocated properly. Mm. If we start to harmonize the stock exchanges, for example, not only do you de-risk investments into the African continent, but you make it easier for investors to tap into a wide variety of opportunities. 70% of the bank's spending for the uh, 2011 fiscal year is going towards infrastructure, and businesses argue time and again, this is the one thing where governments really have to come to the party because it's adding over 40% to the costs of doing business. Is this an issue that really impacts on the work that you do across the African continent where you're saying can the energy supply be sorted out, can it be affordable? It's a plurality of reasons, but I would say that if you were to do a ranking, that's the biggest one. So if you are an export-oriented company such as Aslumital South Africa, for example, you have to use railways to get to port. You have to use port infrastructure. And if that fails you, you potentially do not service the market, or it just increases the cost of doing business. So I think the issue of infrastructure is one that has been taken on board. Again, going back to the theme is how do you how do you make sure that you amass uh, sufficient capital to, to develop that? So privatization is an issue. A lot of the infrastructure service providers currently sit still as government-owned entities, mm -hmm. and it's not the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. So um, biting the bullet and saying some things government is good at, other things private sector is good at, and can we see how we allocate right. um, evenly? And finally, I mean, uh, public private partnerships are things that have been spoken about ad nauseum throughout the year and uh, business I know is willing to talk 
to government, but as you said, government still has its core social responsibilities in providing public goods. What sort of initiatives would stimulate business and galvanize business into action? When I look at infrastructure projects, for instance, business is interested in the telecommunications side because that's the profitable sector. They are not really interested in building roads. They see that as government's work. So at what point do the two forces come together? When the regulatory regime um, allows it. So, for example, in the telecom sector, a lot of work was done around regulation and the legislative infrastructure to make that transparent. So if you're going to go and partner with government in a railway infrastructure development, uh, who's to say? So the, the whole issue about PPPs is that they will only succeed once regulation acts as an enabler. So today, the South African government is thinking very seriously about how to bring private sector into energy generation. The private sector desperately want to get into energy generation, but somehow we're not getting to uh, the end point because the infrastructure to regulate that market does not exist. You can't put the, the cart before the horse, unfortunately. Yeah. E even as much as we all are raring to go, we have to take the time to make sure that each party understands its obligations, its responsibilities, and where all of that lies. Nice, more provoking stuff. Thanks so much for your time. Nongkululego Nyembe Zihater, she's the CEO of Oslaw Mittel South Africa, an observer here at the African Development Bank's annual meetings and a participant in a few roundtables where we're seeing government, development finance institutions, and business coming to the fore, looking to solutions to make growth broad-based and inclusive in 2011.